Get on fucked it up. Elder Scrolls Online is like playing pretend. Let's pretend to be grouped together. Let's pretend that this is an open sandbox world. Let's pretend that we are playing the Elder Scrolls. Well, that's all bullshit. Besides this game's paint job, solid sound design, and absolutely beautiful and nostalgic soundtrack, the nagging fact is that none of it truly feels like an effective MMO extension of Elder Scrolls. It's got the look, but none of the heart and soul. No player housing, no crime or thievery systems, and very little to make you believe this is the best that they could do for us. Vey, this is how I feel about this game, okay? Ready? <laughs> please, please stay, stay away from me. Her emote is like you—you you can't even consult me. Just, just stay back. <laughs> Set one thousand years before the events of Skyrim, the main storyline revolves around a Deidre prince named Molag Bal who is invading the entirety of Tamriel by merging his plane of oblivion into ours. And it's up to you, along with thousands of others, to put a stop to it. You must first choose between three races, each under three factions created for the game. The Aldemary Dominion, the Ebonheart Pact, and the Daggerfall Covenant. The 10th Imperial race is locked off to you unless you pay extra for the Collector's Edition. Welcome, my friends! <laughs> now, before you get out of the prison and experience what it's like to quest online in Elder Scrolls, that'll be $60. Oh, uh, thank you very much, sir. Very good. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is a subscription-based MMO, so that will be $15 more. dollars. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, that's good money right there. Now say, you'd truly like to experience all this game has to offer, correct? Well then the only way to do that is to travel around on the horse, select any faction you would like to be a part of, and have access to the 10th Imperial Race, only available for $20 more. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Zenimax thanks you too, sir. And you too, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> we better get it all up front, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shut up! Now, the map is huge, even when most of Tamriel isn't in the game as of yet. The areas that are playable are massive, and it's going to take you tons of hours to complete each zone, 20 or more. There's no doubt a wealth of content here, easily more than 140 hours. But what does a wealth of content actually matter in the way that it should if it's so painfully average? Boring, yes. Boring, yes? Yes, yes I would describe that, yeah. And while it's not a terrible game, there are just so many bizarre design decisions and lack of wow moments in the game that it's almost insulting to its license, which have been bar setting games for more than a decade. Especially when you consider it demands $15 a month from players, requiring a payment card before you're even allowed to play the $60 worth of 30 days for free. And playing it these past few weeks, you will not be able to shake the feeling the game is still in beta. There have been multiple issues at launch, as every MMO admittedly has, but it's no less frustrating, and it's sometimes hilarious. What the ah! fuck? What the ah! fuck is going on? Ah! <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> really? I'm just ah! What? What the fuck? What the fuck? What? <laughs> oh, I did! I did! That 
gonna fucking... Loading seems to take for like hours, especially in between PvP and PEVE. Where's the fucking rock? He's looking for the rock too. <laughs> we always say, where is this? A lot. <laughs> That's right. Another bug quest. Fucking wonderful. I'm just gonna sleep here. Wake me up when this fucking shard decides to show up. Fucking piece of shit. Uh, you mostly have to log in and, and client restart. It's hard to coordinate your guild effectively when it crashes so often. Four, three, two, one, charge! Nobody charged. What? I'm uh, in yeah. front. <laughs> so, I think crash. the server's crashing. I can hear you on DC. Oh, yep. oh yeah, we're crashing. Oh shit, I just crashed. <laughs> they said oh, we can't win like, anymore. Everybody charge! <laughs> Cut to the server. <laughs> Fucking shit. Everything from broken quests to more serious things like duping bugs, which has destroyed the economy. There's a dupe glitch! What dupe glitch? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you want to see a dupe glitch? Check this out. Whoop, yank. <laughs> now that's a good dupe glitch, right? <laughs> There's an actual dupe glitch. Ah, who cares? Speaking of the economy, one thing you will ask yourself is why every damn thing you kill drops a single gold piece. You think you can trifle with the veil? <laughs> yeah, I do think I can. Justice is done. Uh, he gave one gold. He's like a little yeah. mini boss or whatever, or, or you know, just uh, somebody at large, and he still just gets it's... one gold. Oh, but don't worry. When you fight a boss, prepare your butthole for the amount of gold you're gonna get. Two gold. Uh, you got two gold off her body? Yeah. I didn't get shit off her body. Awesome, even 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 better. <laughs> really? That that's it? Yeah. No, I'm not leaving this place. <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving here until I get something. <laughs> it's over. You have to no, leave. No, I'm not leaving. Oh, she just respawned. Oh fuck! I'm gonna fucking die. It just I said I didn't expect that. Uh. Mm. Yeah, I got a fucking two gold. Destroy the stone. We'll see you back I got my fucking two gold. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my god. It literally is two gold. Two fucking gold? Well, holy shit, Grandpa Elder. You're so fucking generous. Maybe this has to do with how mounts are ridiculously expensive. Making the Oblivion Horse Armor DLC debacle look tame in comparison. Zenimac clearly has priced the horses so that it would be unreasonably difficult and time consuming to purchase them through in-game money. And in a game that has these huge expanses of nothing and emptiness in between quest locations, especially in Cyrodiil, the PvP location, it takes forever to get places on foot. For honor! For glory! Charge! Angry Army Charge! <laughs> Poor Sergeant Ross, this no horse. <laughs> yeah, same. Oh my god. Yeah, mostly, yeah. Which is why some particularly annoyed non-collector edition players have taken to calling it a running simulator. And they aren't exactly wrong. A horse costs you 17,000 gold, or rather 41,700 gold if you want a decent one. Yup, you'd have to kill 41,000 skeletons if you want a horse worth a damn. 
Either that or you can pay $20 more for the collector's edition upgrade that comes with the horse. XP boosts and also the freedom to select your racist faction. Can anyone see what ESO's primary goal here is up front yet? And when you get your expensive horse, no one can ride it but you. When other games like the upcoming Arc Age let people ride with you if they don't have their own. And that's actually a free to play game, you know, where you expect that kind of crap. But no, it's here, in a game that's 60 bucks a pop and $15 a month. That's just a shameful display! A shameful display! Especially with no real auction house other than guild stores to earn gold in game more effectively. Tactics like these put your audience on edge right at the beginning and wary about the whole thing. You just start off on the wrong foot. And many of these, oh, granted, are small gripes, but they're amplified when you see how poorly executed many things in the game actually are. Foremost among them is this. I thought the whole point of taking Elder Scrolls Online was to experience Tamriel online with your friends. But grouping and questing together outside of dungeons and PvP is among the game's worst aspects. PvE grouping is absolutely terrible with the mega server and phasing mechanics. Let me talk to him, watch. See, I can do it, but you take away the people when you do it. That's so fucking stupid. Like, what, why even share a fucking quest? What is the point of sharing in this game at all? I haven't even really worked work together, together with you on anything, really. Oh, uh, you have to wait for them to spawn? That's so fucking annoying. God damn. This. Grouping is pointless in the PvE world. That's the worst part about this MMO. It's an MMO for fuck's sake. It's like it can't fucking decide whether it wants to be a single player Elder Scrolls game which it's not good enough to be or an MMO version of Elder Scrolls. This is the most unsocial PvE MMO I've ever played. So what's the point? Especially when I can fire up Skyrim or Oblivion with mods. You'll never see players from other factions in your world besides Cyrodiil, and even if you complete everything to level 50, when you play in the other faction areas through a story loophole, you still only see players from your own original faction. What the hell? Sharing quests only works if you haven't completed any part of that quest, meaning if you already did it, you will never be able to go back and play it again. You can't go back and help a friend level in this MMO. You have to just sit around as they become a floating arrow constantly to just do it themselves. This type of shit even extends into quests together. You will be doing puzzles one by one, activating nodes, even though people in your group have already done it already. You know another thing is, you have to do the puzzles all yourself. Like, you can't work with your team on the puzzle. Every single member of your group needs to do the puzzle the on down. their own, which I don't like. Before we proceed, I need to speak with you. It defeats the purpose of grouping! There's no collective completion. Everyone feels like they're playing a fucking single player game two feet away from each other. Asking constantly if, oh, did you get this finished, or, or where are you headed next, or man, just to let me know where you're headed next, because this game doesn't keep us together! Oh, man. <laughs> I beat it already, that's why. No, I, I mean, the game. reason why you can't see it is because you already completed it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It is. Alright, so... I'll try to lay down some effects, but... It's, it's not doing anything. Wow, it took a big chunk of your health. What you need... Oh, shit, babe. Yeah, it's not gonna work. <laughs> Did you get anywhere close to killing him, though? No. This had to have been the most important thing to get right. Nope. 
apparently that wasn't an experience that was important to Zenimax Online. You know, they prefer having constant strangers fly into your dungeon, murder everything in sight without so much as a peep and chat, then you start to resent other players as they take resources or ruin your perfectly laid out stealth plans by just charging the fuck in bunny hopping the whole way. Clearly a tactic they must have read in one of the many lore books. And look Didn't at how awesome laughing? it like isn't this so stealthy? How everybody's like running around like ah everybody be quiet we're trying to hide. Yeah, and we're all running around here like ruining spot. your your so experience. Cool. And she doesn't even care. She's like, oh, there's a monkey in here. Oh, well. Uh, she does, does she see me? Like, I'm running around. <sighs> yeah, that was, that was something. Yep, that was something. <sighs> and why can't resources have been instanced to everyone individually? Instead of creating these fights and, and, and anger and, and, and brawls towards each other for getting them. Now, regular quests in the game, PvE, are inconsistent. Some are fun, others are boring and anticlimactic. They attempt to put in some branching decisions, which are appreciated, but aren't much different in practice. Thankfully, all quests are beautifully voice acted, even though some of the voices seem better placed than others. Oh ho. Now you've seen how the roles of hunter and hunted are interchangeable. You've stalked your prey and confronted your predator. You're almost ready to become a briar. One last trial remains. As I've said before, the briars are my guardians. They protect my heart against the outsider. An enemy who wants to steal my heart at any cost. But I do appreciate what's there a lot, okay? I, I don't think I could have played the game without fully voiced. Uh, characters. I can't stand MMOs anymore that aren't voice acted, and Elder Scrolls Online has helped cement this need for me. Do not distract him with my fate. If I die from wounds justly earned, I'll greet my ancestors with honor. But the problem that I have with them now, overall, is how poorly paced these quests are, and their lack total lack of immersion. I can't count how many times I've been playing through these quest lines and I've said out loud, wait, that that's it? Still storm at your knock, ready to go. Not yet. Boom. Get him, yeah, it was, it was the puppet master the whole time. Puppet mistress. All I got was an inferior glyph. Iron ore. Was that, cool. Was that was that it? Like for real? That, that was it. That was terrible. Yeah. Kiss well, my butt. I mean, it's not a dungeon. <laughs> it was just like a side quest, but they should have made it harder. I mean, challenge is what cool. makes There's... challenge is what makes the game fun. Not just challenge, but it should have been like cool. Like she should have said something or something like. I don't know. Yeah, did we miss that? Just, it was we... just a fucking bear, and then we killed her in one second. What the hell? Well, it was a bear, then she transformed into, like, her Daedric soldier thing, but then she died. She didn't say a damn word. If they're either outright easy mode quest bosses, to laughably pointless travels into oblivion for half a second just to press a button in a room. Uh, uh. What the what? fuck? That's it. I just needed to touch the sigil stone. Hold on, don't tell me that's all. What is it loading here? What the fuck? I'm about to get real upset here. Oh my god! <laughs> Wow. Oh, that was it? You still in oblivion? No, I just touched the sigil and then I came out. And That's I fucking was like... it. That was it. That was fucking our time there. That that was the stupidest thing ever. That was an elaborate piece of artwork for. What a uh. piece of shit. <laughs>
There is little to no sense of discovery or wonder in the game, and the few times that does happen, they're so few and far between. When the game is trying to take itself seriously with army invasions and city sieges, everything feels soulless and half-assed. Friendly NPCs are inept. Hello. What the fuck were you doing? Absolutely nothing. These NPCs are so helpful. <laughs> You're so stupid. Urgency. <laughs> There's zero urgency in these games. Greetings. Yeah. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings? Hello. Really? They're just standing there. Hello. Hello. Hi. Then it's like goodbye. <laughs> okay, oh my god. Big high stake battles are really just pockets of NPCs whacking each other endlessly while their fellow soldiers blankly look on just two feet away. They will even greet you as if it's just another beautiful day, rather than the actual gates of hell being brought down upon them! Hello? As if we're not fighting for our lives? Greetings. He, did he say greetings? <laughs> yeah. Greetings. Yeah, greetings, yeah, whatever. Hail. It completely breaks any immersion and any tension in the game. Around every corner is a new opportunity. The game screws the fuck up. But when I get back, what the fuck is this? See? This, this is the kind of shit that absolutely ruins this game. Every turn, every fucking corner, this game breaks immersion. Absolutely breaks immersion. You sit here, you see people just waiting around to farm these fucking b b uh, bosses. Like, I can't see shit. Like, what the fuck is this? This is a joke. I mean, who defends that? Who fucking defends this? Like, yeah, this is fucking Elder Scrolls on... Elder Scrolls, yeah. I thought it was food for sure. Um, I'm surprised that... <clears throat> I'm surprised that we don't see, like, 50 people here. No! I want to kill one of these goddamn things! And how does it die in three fucking seconds? Alright. I can loot it. Spider Queen. What do we get? Alright, there it is. The Soul Gem, Oak Bow, Gauntlet. So, what are these? Fucking gold farmers or something? What is this guy? He's a level 22. And he's just standing there. You're just gonna fucking stand here? Yeah? You should see it. It gets really bad. In some other dungeons, like, all they do is just fucking stand here and wait until these bosses spawn over and over and over and over and over and over. But I, I can't find the... Fuck this. I'm out of here. So fucking stupid. So this big storyline where I'm like, oh shit! A spider queen! Oh man, that sounds so cool! It's gonna be fucking awesome! Gets absolutely ruined when you get there it is so disappointing so laughable so amateur and this game does that shit so often it's hard to let you slip away into its world as easily as previous Elder Scroll games especially when you're constantly fighting the featureless map to find out where the hell you are she was... this map is Oh, hello. Are you looking? Terrible. I can't fucking tell on the map where the goddamn guild bank is. You have to just like run around in the building. 
well, until you find it. The user interface is minimal, perhaps too minimal, as it does as it doesn't do a good job of conveying information to the player. You'll likely want to download several mods which can be integrated easily into the game, thankfully, thanks to their add-on system, which is appreciated. And that does improve the game in some very significant ways. I highly recommend playing with add-ons. But honestly, no matter how many add-ons you add, there's this distinct lack of that dynamic storytelling where you can trot off the beaten path and discover something new to get lost in. Look by your chest. Ooh, it's gonna be like one gold in it. Bay's doing the dirty work. <laughs> Shit, I just found a blue bow in an intermediate treasure chest. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about, ESO. We need more of that shit. Here, it all feels on rails. Go to this starter island, do this. Then go to this bigger island. Now go to the mainland. But ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, stay in your zone or else you get killed. Graphics are serviceable, but there are MMOs out right now that look far better. Uh, uh, just graphics aren't as impressive as some people would have you believe. I, I don't understand why people say this game looks fucking amazing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, I mean, it's passable. That's what I say about it. The graphics are passable. Like, I wish I could show you this pirate this? ship that I was on. It's like completely low res. Let me, like, look at this. I mean, are these impressive graphics? I mean, look at this rock. Do you see this fucking rock? The rocks in Risen 2 look better. They, what the fuck? Let's come where I'm at. Whoa, it shot the ship and the ship is has a little bit of fire on it. Oh. Just a tiny bit of fire. It's just, no, nobody's gonna move that ship then. You're just gonna, like, every single person got off that ship. Okay. That's exciting. <coughs> but that was so exciting. Me, I'm trembling. I'm sorry, but this is pathetic. It's like they didn't even dry. <laughs> Bethesda should be ashamed. They probably are. It's just the world lacks color. It lacks wow factor. It makes exploring every nook and cranny less attractive. <sighs> What's left is a game that doesn't compete well against single player RPGs that it was born from, and a game that doesn't do anything better than current and sometimes subscriptionless MMOs that it's competing against. It's a game that it, it's in a bit of an identity crisis with, with just a coat of Elder Scrolls paint. At least it does do a good job of separating itself from WoW type MMORPGs, okay? Combat is dynamic. It's not a bunch of tab targeting and cooldowns and hotkeys that form your traditional MMO. It actually uses positioning, skill shots, and effective blocking to help determine who is more effective in combat. You know, having a stamina bar and no cooldown skills mixes things up, allowing you to take on content and other players who may outlevel you if you are good enough. Uh, there's actual weight to your decisions on how you want to level your abilities that make some hard choices. And later on, these abilities can then morph into new ones, adding further variation to what you could do with your character. And it's easily one of my favorite parts of the game. And while the combat is not too flashy like some of the rest of the MMOs, uh, though the fire spells look really good for some reason, uh, it, it does do its job of keeping you engaged. Without a combat and leveling system like this, the game would have been a disaster. It would have been even more of a chore to chug through, no doubt. It's just unfortunate 
that the animations are so clunky and, and weightless, especially that floaty first person view that just doesn't work out. <laughs> I do have to say that it's really nice that you have this freedom from class restrictions. Uh, the game lets you use any weapon with any class with, and wear any type of armor. And having a ton of different skill lines available to all classes makes it so where you can create some pretty crazy builds. Uh, it's fun finding these synergies between different spells and weapon abilities. I hope more MMOs look into this in the future, and some already have. It does get slightly better at higher levels, but not by much. And why do you have to do that? Mm. I guess because dungeons are where your friends and you can truly have fun together. Right. If that's if they don't break or bug out as they often do. And, and that's fair to say because Zenimax on, online, I mean, this is literally their first game. <laughs> Yeah, fix it, bro. <laughs> oh. How do you do it? Hammer low. <laughs> Let's fix this fucking quest since you wouldn't want it. Since you couldn't fix it, Zenimax Online, we're gonna fix it for you. This is what it's like to play Elder Scrolls Online right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This is so funny. Grouping is terrible. Like, the only good, you know, content for groups, it feels like, is dungeons. And then, you know, and then this, and then this dungeons happens. are fucked. Ooh. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Elder Scrolls wow. Online. <laughs> But there's not too many of these, and once you run through them once or twice, you feel done. As the loot stuff just isn't rewarding enough. But after level 10, you of course can compete in the massive siege battles in PvP, which is worth checking out if you have a small group to roll with, or better yet, a large guild to dominate your enemies, like the angry army. We see the Zerg, we keep pushing them back! Angry Army, kill them! Charge in! Their backs are to the wall! Killed them. There's a ganker at the gate that from Michael. Push them back! Let them retreat into their castle, the cowards! PvP is where the game does shine. It's got great mechanics, but it's mostly borrowed from games like Dark Age of Camelot and Guild Wars 2. I love the PvP. It was hands down the best part of the game. That includes the PvE content within the PvP world. It's so much more tense and interesting when you're always on your toes, questing around knowing that you can be ambushed by other players at any time. But you can still get those types of experiences elsewhere and without a $15 subscription fee to boot. Honestly, ESO feels exactly like a result of its circumstances. It's license being given to a rookie studio who may have a mix of both old and new people with good intentions and talents, but may just not have had the leadership or experience to pull it off in the way that everyone expected. I'm sorry, but Elder Scrolls fans deserve much better. There's no doubt in my mind about that. I just think of 
the Bethesda developers having this thing ripped from their care and, and turned into this. It's, it's probably that same feeling the original American Psycho or Starship Troopers makers felt about their awful, awful, low-budget crap fest sequels. Sure, it may carry the same name as American Psycho or Starship Troopers, but is it helping or hurting the license? Overall, ESO, it's not a bad game. Okay, it's just terribly disappointing considering the Elder Scrolls names that it uses to sell copies. The final verdict for Elder Scrolls Online is a 5 out of 10. It's average. It's average. When you put everything together, it's hard for me to justify spending a monthly subscription on such a painfully average game that doesn't really stand out in any significant way. PvE content is probably more like a 4 out of 10, especially in its current state, which I'm sure will improve, uh, you know, as time progresses. But the game is held up by Cyrodiil content and PvP at maybe a 6 or a 7. But you level so uh, slowly compared to PvE there that it almost feels like punishment for playing it. And you can find that type of content in other games without having to spend 15 bucks a month for the right to play it. Now, a lot of work went into this game, and that's clear. There is a wealth of content, but it's all mostly ho-hum. Many of the features they decided to put in and focus on, I feel are the wrong ones for an Elder Scroll game. I'd save your money and wait till the game goes, eventually goes free to play. And if it never does, there may not be a reason to check it out, unless you're an extremely hardcore fan of The Elder Scrolls. But even then, you'll know deep down inside, it's just not the same. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. There's a bunch of them at the mine, guys! I need you to get to the mine now! Kill them! Kill them all! Charge into them, reinforcements! Get off your horses! Charge into them! Back of the keep! The Empress is out in the open! They're fighting there! Kill her! We've, we've tracked her down! Kill her! She's dead. Yes! The false emperor is dead! Ah <laughs>